Okay, hi. Um, today I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use my Procreate um, classical oil brush set for um, the iPad um, and how I create my lemon still life basically using those brushes. So let's get started. Um, usually I start with um, a sketch of my subject and here is a really rough lemon sketch so that I know where I'm headed. Um, I keep the sketch on um, its own background, you can see, and I'm going to go ahead and block in my background now so that I get a feeling of what um, the color scheme is going to be. So I'd already done laid out um, a palette, and this comes with the set um, for the final image, and I'll go ahead and using my uh, two-inch brush, pardon my dog, um, go ahead and lay in some big bold color in the background. Really? Seriously? She's very noise sensitive. And then I will go ahead and pull that all the way down and put in some lights just for some variation. Um, let's see, maybe something a little brighter over here. Um, I really want to keep it kind of dark and kind of um, your classical kind of palette where it's quite moody. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to um, give the impression of a table, a flat surface. Um, but again, I don't want it to be too well lit or too perfect. But I am going to use the Procreate's feature and make a, a horizon line that I know is straight because sometimes I can get quite crooked. Um, and then I'm going to warm it up coming into the foreground. And I know this looks hideously ugly, but it'll all be okay, not to worry. And I want to add in kind of like a burnt sienna color too, um, just for some variation. I even put it up there. And I'm going to zoom out because sometimes in Procreate you have to be careful that you um, do paint to the edges, especially if you're zoomed in. Um, you don't even know it's at the end, and that super sucks. Oops, um, I didn't want that much right in there, but you know, hey, I can just paint over it. I'm not wasting any paint, which I love about Procreate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my blend tool now to kind of uh, just mush that around and get it kind of painterly. Um, so I've set my blend tool to this top brush. It says set the blend tool, so that's kind of obvious. And I'm going to go ahead and jack up the size and start to blend. And again, I'm not worrying if it's ugly because I can always go in and kind of reapply and fix it um, as it all comes together. And it's on its own layer, so it's not going to disturb the lemon. And it's all going to be good. Well, hopefully, and if not, I will delete it and start over. So, hey, there's always that. Okay, it's a bit funky coloring, but um, let's see. I'm gonna leave that for now and not worry about it. Um, so, let's kind of go on to the lemon. Um, again, I've set a separate lemon palette to try to get and the leaf to um, give you a good head start. Um, depending on the background you choose and like the lighting you want, you might want to change those to warmer or cooler or brighter values. So um, again, this is just a starting point for values that I wanted to um, find in the lemon, basically. So I like to start with my midtones. Um, I know this looks orange, don't freak out, but lemons aren't perfectly lemon yellow, you know. They kind of have quite a few shades of lemon going on. Sometimes they're almost orange. Sometimes they are like a pale, almost cool, um, greenish yellow. It really depends on, you know, if you have lemon in front of you, what the time of day is, that kind of thing. And my lemon's turning out like a funky, funky shape, but I'm again going to ignore that. I'm going to lose some of my sketch, but um, that's okay. It was more just kind of a general guideline, so I'm not going to worry about that. So, I mean, you could just leave that in the areas where you did have your midtones, but I like to, since it's Procreate, I'm not wasting paint, go ahead and just um, block on the whole thing. And then I'm going to bring in my shadows, which is pretty much, you know, form shadows. Easy to understand. Um, I'm not liking the shape of this brush because it's so square. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my number eight filbert, um, which is a little more kind of painterly, smushy-wushy. It does a little bit of blending for you. Um, so if you don't like that, which I actually don't just yet, it's okay for later. Let me try the round and see. Um, yeah, um, if you go to the four, then you can kind of dab it on like you're doing paint tiling. Um, let's see, I'm going to go for a little bit darker value on the bottom. And I'm kind of going to give that form there and around the where the stem was attached or the leaf was attached. 
there was something there, but then I just remembered I'm going to have a leak, so that was kind of unnecessary. I'm going to go ahead and take it up and over the back side too, just to give, make that turn away from us. Um, it's quite a bit dark, so that was a bit of a mistake, but never mind. You can fix it, no problem. You can even, because it is Procreate, um, you know, or even if you do, would do it if you were actually painting this um, with real materials, you could, you know, wipe it away with a rag or just use your eraser or same similar. And fix that little blub. Okay, so I am liking how it's starting to sh um, take shape, but I'm going to go ahead and put in maybe some um, different tones, something a little more lemon yellow. I mean, again, I've got such a dark background that implies that the whole scene is set darker, so I'm probably not realistically going to get um, that bright an actual yellow tone. So I don't want to go crazy or fill the whole thing in with it. Um, so I'm going to go over just a little bit and calm it down. Um, but I do like the hint of, like, you know, your classic lemons, so um, that people don't think it's an orange. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in lighter values up here. And with this particular brush, you do have to do multiple passes because of its transparency. And don't forget your detail highlights and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so <clears throat> next we're going to move on to blending that out just a little bit. The blend tool is pretty big, um, so I like to really shrink it down and adjust that too so that I don't go in and destroy all the color I just laid down. Um, you can always, you know, go bigger. But again, we want this to be kind of classical painterly style. So we want minimal blending. Um, so it kind of gives the impression of, of um, minimal brush strokes and more of like a painterly, um, almost impressionist, impressionistic style, which I quite like. And I think it's fun to try to achieve and procreate because it is a digital um, contemporary medium. So I'm going to leave that for now. I'm kind of okay with that. And I'm just going to clean up that edge. Okay. Yep. And let's move on to the stem, which I also included in this palette, which comes with the brush set. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, oops, shrink down. Let's recheck. Yep. Number four round. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to shrink it way down to get the details. And go ahead and lay in, shrink it even more. I find with Procreate, um, when you're working in smaller areas and details, it's um, a little bit better to take your time because now that it is, you know, touching other quote unquote paint, when you do go into blend it or fix it, um, you are going to be a little bit more destructive because it's um, neighboring on the parts you might like. Um, so there, I'm presuming that the light's coming from this angle, so I'm going to put my brightest green. I will um, best lit most vibrant green where I believe mm -hmm. that the it's catching the light um, and then working into my darker shadows whoops it's the same value that's not good um, yeah I guess I'll go with that let's try this one it's still pretty bright but okay okay there we go so I'm gonna use a smaller um, setting for the blend tool it's probably quite as tiny as I can get it so you know in classical painting as you may know um, what is in focus what is sharp is where your eye is drawn to so if I wanted to draw all your attention to this leaf I would sharpen it and give it lots of um, detail but because it's kind of secondary or my intention is that it's secondary I'm gonna go ahead and leave it a little bit um, lesser defined and leave the focus on the lemon behind it. Sorry, I'm left-handed, so I'm painting. Boop, that's way too sharp. Actually, I'm gonna drop down to something, um, a liner to get some detail on the top of that um, stem. Here you go, so see, I should talk about that too. So this brush set also includes some of the smaller detail liners that you would find um, used in classical painting. And just give it some more, super not into that. So I'm actually gonna choose, yeah, yeah. I might go ahead and find something a little deeper. And I'm gonna add that to the palette. Go ahead and drop that over there, just so I do get some depth in here. I've gone to all this trouble so far, why not just add a virtual color? Me. I'm going to blend that out just a little bit more. Okay, 
and I am happy with that. So I'm going to turn off actually my sketch because it's a little bit distracting. And as you can see, all of a sudden it looks like our lemon is floating in space, which is really not good. Um, so what you could do is add your drop shadow on the same layer as a lemon, but I don't want to because, I don't know, I just don't want to. Um, I think it's safer in this realm to... Um, go ahead and add it on its own layer. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is pull a darker color from my background because the shadow from the lemon is actually gonna cast, make that those values darker, not the lemon. It's not gonna be like a dark lemon color, as you probably know. Um, let's just name that layer shadow. And I'm gonna go use my number eight hop here because it's really nice and transparent and I can build up that value. Um, subtly. So as you can see, all of a sudden it's not floating in space. Yay! That's what we wanted. And I give a leaf a little bit of shadow too. And you can see how that modeling is like magic. Awesome. So I'm going to jack up the size. I'm going to lower the transparency because we want that to fall off um, as the light spreads beyond where the shadow oops, would fall. Um, okay, so I'm going to tweak that. Okay, so now you can see that there's quite a difference. It still looks a little bit floaty, so what I need to do now is to add some shadow up under the um, lemon so that they look a little bit more cohesive. So I'll go back to my um, lemon layer. Actually, you know what I could do is add, add a layer on top. I'm going to try that first just because I don't want to really disturb my paint if I mess up. Um, same, same. And just if that works. If not, we can go back to the other, do it on the lemon layer. Okay, what's the deal? Let's turn up the transparency. Everything looks, oh, I was in the smudge tool. No wonder. Okay, I'm just going to soften that lower edge um, without making it look bruised. I think that's kind of okay. I mean, it's not great, but you kind of get the idea, right? Um, you can go ahead now and give a little bit more modeling into that shape. It's kind of like glazing an oil, right? And because it's on its own layer, it's pretty much the same effect if you're a little bit careful. And no one's gonna be the wiser. Awesome, so I am actually kind of happy with that for the sake of this demonstration. And then to give it a final little touch, um, what I do is I imported a the canvas texture that comes with the brush set into its own layer, and I'm going to turn it on. There it is. And it's kind of um, dark in tone. So what you need to do is set that layer by clicking the N to I like color burn. And as you can see, it's super, super dark in the image. And you can try the others. Um, you can experiment with which really what catches your eye and enhances your underbase colors. That's, I mean, multiply is quite nice, I think, too. But for some reason, oh, I'd actually kind of go between the two of those. Um, okay, like that. See, that's multiply, and here's color burn. Color burn's a little bit more contrast. Multiply, a little more subtle. Mm, I'm gonna have to say that multiply wins for me, for my taste. Um, so that's it. That is how I use my um, basic oil set of brushes for Procreate to create a lemon-esque classical painting inspired um, painting of a lemon. Short and sweet and simple. It wasn't that hard, was it? And um, I think it's really fun in the end to go ahead and oh I forgot um, one of the palette or one of the brushes rather too is a hair texture that also helps you get some um, some interesting brush marks that you know maybe use the edge of a palette knife or something just to give a little bit more visual interest and a little more of a hands-on kind of feel um, quite a nice quite a nice um, touch I think. Um, it's just that those little surprises that make you think, okay, this wasn't made digitally, or people might actually have to ask. And the last thing to do when you create something like this is just sign your name. So you see, and that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.